George Soros. Some people love him. Some people hate him. George Soros is a guy that is hated by his own country. But your life is controlled by him. Today, we will see how he controls your life. To understand that, we need to go all the way back to see how he managed to get in this position and why he is like that. George Soros was born in 1930 in Hungary. He had a hard childhood. He was born Grigory Schwartz. His family changed the surname to Soros. It was the time of World War II and Hungary was in the Austrian painter's occupation. Soros was a Jew and we all know what the painter did to them. In a 60-minute interview, he described his childhood in the Nazi occupation. Years old. And I would say that that's when my character was made. In what way? That one should think ahead, one should understand and, and anticipate events. Uh, and uh, one, one is threatened. In the same interview, he described how he survived the Holocaust. The thing is, is that you went out with this protector of yours who swore that you were uh, his adopted godson. Yes, yes. Went out, in fact, and helped in the confiscation of property from the Jews. That's right. I mean, that's, that sounds uh, like an experience that would send lots of people to the psychiatric couch for many, many years. Was it difficult? Uh, not, not, not at all. Not at all. It, uh... This wasn't the only thing that made him the way he is. In 1947, he left Hungary for England to study at London School of Economics. His mentor there was Karl Popper. Popper is one of the most influential philosophers of the last century. He is famous for his theory about falsification, which means that a theory can never be proven, but it can be falsified, meaning that it can and should be scrutinized with decisive experiments. And Open Society, a view that describes the dynamic system about universal morality, which means everybody has similar morals. Soros combined finances and philosophy and made the theory of reflexivity, which says investors don't base their decisions on reality, but rather on their perceptions of reality instead. Now we can understand his life philosophy, his investing philosophy, and why he is like that. He got a job in a merchant bank, but he wasn't so interested in that, and he quit it after two years working there. Then he decided to move to the US in 1956. While studying in London and working as a merchant in a bank, he built some European connections. With those connections, he decided to start a hedge fund named Double Eagle in 1969, which would later be changed to Quantum Fund. From his European friends, he got $6 million for his fund. And there, his legacy starts. By 1973, he managed $50 million. And seven years later, in 1980, $380 million. He became famous in 1992 in an event called Black Wednesday. England was part of exchange rate mechanism with few other European countries. Other countries pressured England to devalue its currency or leave the system. After resisting for some time, England floated its currency and the valuation of the pound was going down. Before it dropped, George Soros called every bank he knew to lend him money so that he could short sell the Great British Pound. All that in one day. The Bank of England was in chaos. George Soros made $1 billion in that night. The value of pound dropped and the estimated cost to the British taxpayers was 3.3 billion pounds. The Bank of England is only one of them. George Soros is banned in six countries. In 1993, he was accused of triggering panic selling German marks. 1996, he traded billions of Finnish currency to short sell them. Same year, Thailand too. 1997, Asian financial crisis. He was accused that his investments action were responsible for the crisis. Malaysia's prime minister accused Soros of destabilizing regional economics through currency speculation. 1998, he triggered the panic selling of Russian ruble and so on. By crushing your country's currency, that doesn't make him control your life. He does that differently. You wouldn't believe it, but he does that with philanthropy. In 1979, Soros started doing activities that would lead to the Open Society Foundation, who shared the name with one of Karl Popper's views. These activities were establishing liberal democracies in countries that had threatened human rights. From 1984 to today, George Soros donated $32 billion to the foundation. 
Now, how did he want to establish liberal democracies? By influencing media, politics, and colleges. His activities are mainly aimed at encouraging political changes in various countries around the world, which liberal politicians generally welcome and right-wing politicians not so much. In 2004, George Soros spent $27 million to defeat George Bush. Soros donated millions to Obama and over 50 million to Biden. But enough politics. Open Society spends more than 50 million per year to influence colleges. In four years, 2014 to 2018, he donated $184 million to 171 colleges in 51 countries. He has connections with more than 30 media companies. Some of them are New York Times, Washington Post, CNN, and so on. Soros founded 75 pro-criminal prosecutors for $450 million. There's rumors that he secretly supports parties in every country. Some people believe that Soros uses charity to get close to world leaders so that he could get better and inside information about the world economy. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Soros is surrounded by political controversy. His support for progressive causes made him the target of right-wing conspiracy theories. And he is also Jewish, so there is a lot of anti-Semitism. He is one of the most successful investors of all time, but he isn't perfect. He had tons of losses. Soros once lost $200 million, all profits that year. But that's nothing. 1987 lost $800 million in stock crash. 1994 lost $600 million. 1998 lost $2 billion, and there's more. He wanted to short the Hong Kong dollar, but it had massive reserves and China behind it. So Soros failed. He didn't break the Bank of England. There were many people doing it. He was just the biggest one. He fails in politics too. When he spent $27 million in 2004 to defeat Bush, he lost. George Bush won the 2004 elections. So in summary, does George Soros control your life? Yes and no. He funds some politicians, media and colleges, but he doesn't fund them all. And that he funds political parties all over the world is just a rumor. If he does and those parties win, then yes, he controls your life. But until then, yes and no. So you can relax and watch another video on our channel. And if you enjoyed, press the subscribe button.